the freedom dividend is universal basic income by a different name, just test better. So we're going with the freedom dividend. Uh, where every American adult between 18 to 64 gets $1,000 a month. Free and clear, you get it, I get it. It uh, doesn't matter if you're working, how much you make, we don't care. You're a citizen, you're an adult, $1,000 a month. Now, uh, the cost of that is about $2 trillion per year. Now, uh, for reference, our economy is now $19 trillion, and our, it's grown $4 trillion in the last 10 years alone. We are the richest, most advanced society in the history of the world, and we can easily afford 1000 bucks a month. Um, so the federal budget right now is $4 trillion, so $2 trillion seems like a very big ad. But the great thing about it, this is not a government program. It's just uh, circulating money back to citizens so that we can uh, buy things for our children, repair our cars, uh, go to school, start a business, whatever we want to do. So the, this $2 trillion, the way it's broken up is that uh, we currently spend between five and six hundred billion on welfare, income support, disability, et cetera. Current welfare programs are about five to six hundred billion dollars. Yes. Okay. So if you're going to give everyone a thousand dollars a month, but they're already getting, let's say a thousand dollars in current benefits, mm -hmm. you're, then you say, okay, you're already getting it. You're set. And, okay. Okay. And so this five to six hundred billion decreases the cost of the freedom dividend by about twenty-five percent. Okay, down to one and a half trillion. Yes. Okay. Now. The, uh, the big change you have to make is that right now our income tax system is going to be really terrible at generating revenue from AI software machines because they're going to do more and more work, but the beneficiaries tend to be really big tech companies that don't pay a really high tax rate at all. You wrote in your book that uh, Apple, Microsoft, and Google have tens of billions to hundreds of billions of dollars that they run through offshore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. To Ireland's a particular favorite. Uh, and so they, they just have all this money parked offshore because they can easily just assign revenue to, to various places. Um, and so even as the big winners in this AI revolution make more money, it's very unlikely that the um, US government or society is gonna see a lot of that. So what we have to do is we have to adopt a value added tax, which is something that every other industrialized country in the world has except for us. So it's us modernizing and getting with the program. And because our economy is so large, a value-added tax at half the average European level would generate about 800 billion in revenue. So Europe's about 20% value-added tax. Yeah, and so and what, at, what does that look like then for like a company like Apple then? That so what would happen is that Apple would be paying uh, a value-added tax at every step of the production process, and then their cost go up by about that amount, total amount. So about 20% more for a MacBook or an iPhone? Well, it would be about 10%, though traditionally companies end up eating some part of that and then passing some of it along to consumers. So it could be that, uh, that the price of like, you know, the um, iPad or whatever goes up like 8% or something along those lines. But um, keep in mind though, you've got $1,000 extra a month and so has everyone else. And so um, everyone, like the bottom, 94% of the US population will end up with an increase in purchasing power. But then the question then is, if, you, if, if the items are costing more money, if there is that slight inflation yeah. of, the, of the cost of the items, then how much is that offset this $1,000 a month that I'm making? Yeah, it will give me the ability to maybe buy it, but then these normal items like food and water um, and electricity are uh, have they, how much have they went up and how much does that take away from my thousand that I'm earning? Well, it just depends upon how much you consume and, th and that's one of the beauties of this system is that the average American is qu consuming um, nowhere close to the threshold where, the, where, <laughs> where, the, where they would lose. Uh, again, the bottom 94% of Americans would see an increase in purchasing power. You need to consume an awful lot in order to, to have the VAT um, be more than a thousand bucks uh, a month. And if you're at that apex of society, um, then that's great, it's great for you. I, even the wealthy people I know, and I do know some wealthy people, uh, they prefer a consumption tax regime to something like a wealth tax or even higher income taxes because they, they, what they'll say is, look, I can control my consumption. I can get a slightly smaller yacht or jet or whatever, uh, but I can't control my wealth. And so if you tax my wealth, it's gonna make me really mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you tax my consumption, then I'll be like, yeah, that's fine. Um, and again, every other major industrialized country already has it. 
some at, ha at twice the level. So this is something that people are very, very accustomed to. So just value added part. tax, tax is consumption, which is why people are more okay with it. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, value added tax at half the European level gets you 800 billion. So that plus the okay. 500 billion gets you up to about 1.3 trillion. Uh, out of the, the two. Uh, out of the two. Yeah. Now here's the beauty of it, is that if you give people a thousand bucks a month, they're gonna spend it. Right now, 59% of Americans can't afford an unexpected $500 bill. Everyone's really cash strapped and yep. living paycheck to paycheck. So with an extra thousand bucks. Us included support on patreon.com. The link is below. <laughs> yeah, support sure. Support Yang 2020. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's do it. It's gonna help creatives, artists, entrepreneurs. The Freedom Dividend will be the greatest catalyst to entrepreneurship and creativity in the history of the world. So you put a thousand bucks a month into people's hands, they're gonna spend it, they're gonna create things, and it's going to create four and a half million new jobs and grow the economy by 13% or two and a half trillion, according to the Roosevelt Institute that modeled this out. So it's going to be this incredible boom, and the US government gets back uh, about 500 billion of that in new revenue because if the economy booms by two and a half trillion, of course, the government's gonna get its fair share. So that gets you up to 90% of the cost of the freedom dividend, and then you get the last couple hundred billion from cost savings to healthcare, incarceration, homelessness services. It gets very expensive when yeah. people hit our institutions. Yeah. yeah. There's one study that showed that if you give a poor family $1, it'll save us $7. So, <laughs> so, so uh, keeping people functional with a thousand bucks a month actually is going to be this incredible value multiplier. Mental health will improve, graduation rates will rise, uh, nutrition gets better, like all of these things that will be incredible mm -hmm. value adds. Um, and you know what goes down? Hospital visits, yep. domestic violence, yep, yep. criminality, <laughs> you know, like all of these things. So it pays for itself. Uh, and the, the, what I'm, I'm suggesting um, isn't even aggressive. Like you could say, hey, we're really gonna like create this, which we will. Uh, but even if you're conservative, this thing's very affordable.